Welcome to the introduction to what's on tap, but we're at a place that doesn't need an introduction. We're here in Cooperstown, New York. Brewery Oma Gang is our site today. Delicious beer, incredible food. It's time to find out what's on tap. Across the nation, people have turned the hobby of crafting beer into a lifestyle. Amazing breweries are only a few minutes away from your own home. From nano to regional or micro to macro, the question you won't need to ask is what's on tap. Since 1997, Brewery Oma Gang has been calling this spot in Cooperstown home. On over 140 acres, this place has been pumping out beers to 49 states plus Puerto Rico, and I'm ready to go check it out. Let's do it. Let's go. So the, the brewery was founded with a really singular idea of, of how to make beer. Um, our founders were Don Feinberg and Wendy Littlefield. Uh, they lived in this area and they were beer importers uh, for a large part of their career and just had a deep abiding love of Belgian style beer in particular and uh, in their travels came across these Belgian style farmhouse breweries. In the late 90s they decided they, they would try to bring that vision to the United States um, and create something that's a really authentic piece of Belgian culture here. The beers that we made right off the bat too were Abbey style, Trappist style beers that go way back into Belgian history and, and Belgian culture. So uh, they opened the brewery with uh, a Belgian style double ale as our flagship, um, kind of deep and spicy and, and complex. That beer really set us up for the remaining 22, 23 years that it's been now, is uh, the, the idea of making very traditional Belgian style beer. Brewery Oma Gang being open for 23 years makes the 1997 hanging at the entrance make sense. But when it comes to the 1549 you see, that tells us about the origins of the name Oma Gang. This was a, uh, a big party essentially in, in Brussels in Belgium, uh, celebrating the, the procession of uh, the new monarch uh, coming through town. Um, and essentially the whole city of Brussels gathered in the town square and uh, threw a party. And it was a real big procession um, with uh, sort of brewers, bakers, craftsmen. Uh, anybody who was sort of an artisan in the city came down and, and shared their art, shared their craft, um, and uh, that kind of spirit of music and craftsmanship and beer all coming together, uh, that, was, that was ultimately called an Oma Gang. It was a, a walkabout around the city square. Um, so that, that name has really stuck with us and still, still says a lot about who we are today. Oma Gang Beer has a 49 state reach across the country. Even out in Hawaii, your local beer store could have Oma Gang for sale. We distribute across the country. We recently just added Montana and Wyoming uh, just wow. this past year, who are our most recent additions. Um, but yeah, you, you find our beer pre pretty widely. Um, big, big areas for us, obviously, in New York City is, is kind of our backyard here in upstate. Um, we, we're down in, you know, the DC area, Maryland, Florida, uh, California does pretty nicely for our beer. So yeah, you can find a lot of Oma Gang across the country for sure. And Puerto Rico now. Really? Yeah, wow. we're shipping beer down to Puerto wow. Rico. They, uh, they love neon rainbows. Apparently. Working at Oma Gang, having a love for craft beer is a must. We asked Matt and Justin how they got into the craft beer industry. I think like a lot of people, I got into craft beer sort of right around college. You, you turn 21 and you can go to a store and walk away with anything you want. And uh, you discover that there's a lot of different options out there. And I really kind of dove, dove head first into it. Really recognized that I had a passion for beer and talking about the way that it's made. And uh, right after college, just kind of started my way in a local craft beer store and worked my way up and through and um, ultimately landed a job selling Brewery Oma Gang beer in Massachusetts, uh, where I was for about four or five years. And uh, then I moved out this way to just be closer to the brewery and have a little bit more of a hand in uh, what we brew and, and how we go to market. And uh, I've been out this way for just about a year now. I went to college uh, out in Hartford and uh, I had a roommate who in the closet had his whole like homebrew set up. You know, I used to bug him about brewing. He's like, oh, that's a big pain in the butt, uh, you know. So we never set it up. As soon as I got out of college, I think for Christmas, I asked my parents for a homebrew set and uh, just started homebrewing, you know, in the kitchen with my mom um, and did that for probably about 10 years until I had somebody kind of inspire me to maybe take it to the next level. 
um, and I found the American Brewers Guild, which is out of Vermont. So I graduated from that in 2011, interned at Captain Lawrence, and then kind of sent my resume everywhere, and this place called up, and I got lucky enough to work here, so been here since 2011. While both Matt and Justin have a hand in the beers at Oma Gang, Justin is a guy trying new recipes for the next beer we could see at the brewery. So I'm the innovation manager and I basically run our pilot system, which is a one hectoliter pilot system. Um, usually just given my tank space, uh, I'm able to brew once a week and sometimes it's kind of brewing something just for fun. Um, other times we're kind of tasked like we want to create this style of beer, so then I, I work on that. And sometimes I have to do a few iterations of it. Um, luckily, lately we've been pulling some of those pilot beers. I'll yield about four sixles, you know, so 20 gallons of beer, and uh, we'll serve them out here on the patio. So we'll get some good feedback from customers too. As a team, we have our whole like innovation team, and, and we meet once a week. Um, so if there is a concept there, yeah, we're saying we want you know a chocolate stout or whatever it may be. Um, so I'll try to hit those marks and, and just gather all the information from everybody and, and create what I think we've all tried to envision. With all the beers that have been released at Oma Gang, Justin and Matt have a favorite in common. I mean, I might still go Hennepin. That's When I started here, that was when I, I latched on to first. I mean, it's easy drinking, um, but it's it's got but a sort of ABV content to it. Um, but I can drink that all year round. I love that beer. Yeah, I, I would agree. Hennepin, Hennepin definitely brought me to the brewery. Um, I would say today, I really just can't stop drinking enough of, of our new Pilsner, Idle Days. And uh, we make a Belgian wit beer called Witta, um, which is our number one seller across the country. Mm. And uh, th this time of year, that beer is just refreshing and bright and a little spicy. And uh, that goes down pretty nice out here. After our sit down with Justin and Matt, they took us on a complete walkthrough of the brewery. It was incredible to see the whole facility, but due to time, the full walkthrough can be seen on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash what's on tap. This video is over 10 minutes long and it really gives you a good idea of everything that goes on at the brewery. We got to see their huge brew system and even got to try some unreleased beers currently in testing. You definitely don't want to miss this tour, so check that out at the end of this episode. As we concluded the tour through the brewery, the four of us built up an appetite. Oma Gang has an incredible menu that incorporates their beers right into their meals. We headed back to the patio to grab a bite to eat. All right, so we all got something different here. I, I got, it was, you gotta try it. I will, don't worry. <laughs> These poutine fries are the best I've ever had. Like, I haven't even started eating yet. I've been here multiple times just for these fries. First of all, first time I came here was to try it, just to try the, you know, the, you know, the beer. I wanted to see what, you know, what you guys had here. And then me and my dad, we go, hey, let's, you know, let's get some fries while we're at it. Let's try the poutine fries. And the next time we came back, we came back for the fries. <laughs> as soon as we opened, reopened, uh, after this whole COVID thing, uh, I had to get fries. I had to have them in like six months, it yeah. felt like. But just because I've, well versed myself in trying to make this at home. I mean, the the pale sour is right uh, is what's going into the gravy here, or is it now the the? What, oh, are we having three philosophers in the gravy? We try to incorporate beer into a lot of the gravies and the sauces that we yeah. make Can't to add to the yeah, experience. No, I know the barbecue sauce that we were using on this pulled pork had both our cider and rare balls in it. And typically the, the jam and gravy that goes on the chicken and waffles yeah. is actually Abbey Ale. Okay. Which was our which our, our very first beer, um, Belgian style double. And that just adds like, I do a lot of cooking with beer. Um, because the beers have a lot of spice to them, they're just great for marinades and for sauces and things like that. And that, that beer just adds a little more depth and kind of spiciness to that sauce. Unbelievable. Now how about what, what, what are you guys eating here? I got the Europa Vieja. Which is, uh, I believe, Vieja. a wonderful pulled pork uh, from Brett Smith, our uh, awesome head chef there. Uh, it's, it's tasting delicious right now. Yeah, and I've got um, so a buttermilk chicken Caesar. Uh, I'm eating a salad, so trying to do something healthy for myself <laughs> today. Um, but I, I paired that up with the Idle Days Pilsner. Um, so, something about the kind of like starchy, biscuity sort of quality of like. You know, honestly, fried chicken just goes perfectly 
with uh, like like soft malt characteristic of the beer. Um, so so e even though Idle Days is a pilsner and that's you know the most prevalent beer style on the planet. Um, I, I find a lot of pairings to go with that around here. We love Oma Gang. We love coming here. The food's great. Uh, atmosphere's great. Love the patio weather and everything like that. Definitely, definitely worth the hour and a half drive. That brewery walkthrough was incredible, and the food here is awesome. After hearing everything Justin and Matt had to say, we're definitely ready to try this out. I think it's time to, to pour, pour four. four. All right, so pour four, finally get to uh, taste the beers we've been talking about, been showing people. Um, yeah, where, do, where are we starting here? Obviously, we don't have them in front of us. We're gonna go one by one with you guys. I'm glad you guys are doing the tasting with us here. So uh, yeah, take it away. Uh, well, I figured let's start with Idle Days Pills. We'll start on the lighter end of things. Uh, this is new for us, came out this year. It's a Belgian style Pilsner. Um, key aspect of what makes it a Belgian style is that we're using a Belgian lager strain of yeast. Um, it's not going to be as, as funky as, as phenolic or estery as, as the Belgian ale yeast, of course. It's, it's nice and smooth. You get a little bit of sulfur notes. Um, we have some floor malted uh, Pilsen malt, um, as well as uh, just a little bit of flake corn, and then it's Saz hops, so just noble hops. So really just a traditional Pilsner recipe with that Belgian lager strain. Yeah, very crisp. I mean, it's, it's cleaned. It's just, I, I, it's what I think. This is your your starter for somebody who is trying to come here, and you know, I'm new to the craft beer scene. Like I said, uh, Oma Gang being first brewery I've ever been to. Uh, you know, this is where I got introduced to craft beer, and I I didn't start with this. If I started with this, it would have been I think an easier transition because yeah. at first I go super bitter, which, which Neon Rainbows isn't even as bitter as some of the other beers I've now had in my life. But it's just, it's like, you go to this, so you're gonna slowly get in, like, oh yeah, this is a great beer. Kind of going off that, like you said, it was one of your first breweries you've been to. You hit 21, maybe start to go exploring a little bit. If you're used to stuff like your Bud Lights, Natty Lights, stuff like that in college, this is a perfect transition into craft beer. This just came out this year, right around when everything went crazy with the world. So, uh, you know, how has the release been with, you know, everything that's gone on? Yeah, well, the, the so far, like, the reception to the liquid itself has, has been really awesome. Um, we, we got this beer out and, uh, you know, great write-ups on it, great reviews so far. Um, obviously, we wish we could have launched it under different circumstances. So, so this beer hit nationally um, right around March of this year when the whole world kind of changed. Yeah. Um, but uh, for us, this has just been a beer that's like had a real resonance here at the brewery. Um, the brewers put uh, years worth of effort into developing the recipe for this beer. Wow. Um, so, so even though it drinks pretty, pretty light, pretty, pretty unassuming, good kind of summer sipper. Um, this is this is one of the most kind of obsessed over and and you know hard fought beers that we've done. Uh, so so even though we got off to a little bit of a delay with the launch, um, we're, we're still expecting a pretty long yeah. long wait for this one. All right, got the cans on the table for the next one. So next one we're going to Neon Rainbows, right? I'm, I shouldn't be the one calling yeah. it out. All right, so <laughs> how you guys? Where should we go next? Where should we go next? You made, you made the right call there. Uh, we'll step it up to Neon Rainbows. So this is. Um, Pretty new for us as well. I believe we first released it last year. Again, one of the beers that I piloted for Belgium Comes to Cooperstown back in 2016, um, where I was drinking probably a lot of Heady Topper at the time and just wanted to take my first stab at a New England style hazy IPA. So this is the first New England you've done? Yes. Yeah, and I basically just you know went into our walk-in, uh, the hop cooler, and selected my favorite varieties that we had in there. So um, huge amount of Whirlpool hops. We got Centennial, Citra, Mosaic, Simcoe, and Topaz. And then we go through two stages of dry hopping. So we're going to hit it once with um, Citra and Mosaic right in the middle of fermentation. So this way the yeast, you get a lot of biotransformation, a lot of fruity character develops from that. And then we'll dry hop it again at the end of fermentation with Topaz and Simcoe. Um, just to give you a little bit more of that kind of like fresh dry hop character on top of that fruity dry hop character. And uh, just trying to make like a hot monster of a beer. Uh, and it's uh, just base two row malt, um, a good amount of oats in there for that body and haze. And uh, just a touch of Cara 20 for a little bit of that color. So I'm a big New England IPA guy. 
I, I don't know if it just comes with the territory I'm from, but there, I'm always been drawn to New England IPA. And the Citra Mosaic, those are just, it makes it so much better. It's incredible, that flavor that you get from that. And this is one of the best New England IPAs that I've ever tried. Not to mention the style points for the can too. I love that, I have it on the beer fridge back home. It just looks so sharp. It draws you to it, that's the thing. I never tried it. I saw it in Wegmans one day, I was like, that looks really cool. It doesn't have that, it has that tropical, yeah. tropicalness to it, but it doesn't have that super juicy it's that you really do get with a lot of yeah. these. Um, this is the first IPA I ever had Whoa. when I first got into beer, craft beer. This is the first one I ever tried. And, uh, you know, I, I think that it's a, it is a uh, acquired taste for some people because I first tried it and I was like, well, the bitterness <laughs> in this one. And also, I, I happen to have, I think right when it first came out, so I'm not sure what, if there any, has been anything that's changed, but it could easily be my taste buds have changed with, uh, with this beer. And uh, I mean, this has gone from the whoa to, all right, yeah, this is, whoa, this is it's awesome. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. whoa to whoa. <laughs> yeah. It's the whoa to whoa. <laughs> Love this one. Yeah, and I would say that it's it's kind of nice. Um, we're gonna we're trying a couple classics, a couple beers that really fall in line with our our Belgian style heritage and history. But um, we really picked up here with two that represent sort of a new step for the brewery. Um, you know, Idle Days is our first lager, Neon Rainbows. Um, a lot of people maybe five, ten years ago would have said, "Oh my gang, will never come out with a, a hazy, unfiltered New England style American IPA." Um, but but here it is, and and really in the last you know three years or so that Beard has been making small batches of this beer, this the demand has gotten bigger and bigger over the last few years uh, to, to the point where it's like uh, we we got to give the people what they want, and and th this beer has really taken off for us locally in New York State, and uh, we are going to start to finally reach some national markets with it next year. All right, so three philosophers, three philosophers, yeah. Um, so this is probably one of our best known beers, uh, one, one of our most widely distributed beers across the country. Um, something that we've been making since 2004 at this point, uh, and is really, I would say, tied to what Oma Gang is and, and what we do. Um, the, the style is a Belgian style quad, um, which we blend with a little bit of um, imported Cherry Creek, um, which is a, a touch unusual. The initial uh, inspiration to brew this beer actually came from a, a write-in contest that we did back in the early 2000s where we asked fans of the brewery to describe what their perfect beer would be. Um, not necessarily according to style, but what the perfect flavor profile and aromas would be. And uh, the, the winning submission, we decided that we would brew. Um, so That's really cool. That is That's a great really cool. idea. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so, so really this was the dream of some craft beer fan. And uh, the sort of flavors that were described to our brewers at that time ended up equating to this Belgian-style quad, which is kind of the pinnacle of, of Trappist brewing, the, the deepest, most complex, highest ABV beer that's, uh, that's in Belgian-style tradition. In searching for a touch of extra complexity, uh, I, I mentioned that the, the founders of the brewery at that time were importers of Belgian beer. Um, they were looking for a way to drive the flavor of this over the top and add something really special and unique to it. Um, and ultimately that turned out to be taking the base Belgian quad and adding just a little bit of an imported Creek beer, which is a cherry, wild fermented cherry ale that they got from Belgium. Um, so about two, three percent of the total volume of all three philosophers is, is imported Cherry Creek that just kind of on top of that toffee and caramel malt flavor you would get from a traditional quad, throws a little bit of, of cherry and dark fruit in there. Oh, I've always liked that cherry, cherry flavor, no matter what it is, there's something about that flavor in food or in drinks, and for this, it really, I think it takes it to that next level. I love the color. I mean, it, it's almost, um, it actually works out pretty good right yeah. now. I think that, I think we really hit a good day in you know July here to be able to, you know, not that temperature makes a difference, but of course we've talked about how there's lawn mowing beers. I don't think anyone's gonna you know say, oh, three philosophers, I love drinking that when I'm doing a lot of work around the house. But really, like this is a nice because we're in the shade here, really get to enjoy it, just sit here and enjoy it. And uh, I mean, yeah, I'm getting a real that that cherry flavor. Like this is, and it's got 
you put it in the sunlight, you're starting to get a little bit of that, that color too, that little hint. Um, this is great. Yeah, so all right. Getting out of the bottle here. What do we got? This is a, this is a special little treat, I think, right now. Um, this is part of our blendy, blundery release here, series. Um, so these are very small batch releases that uh, you can only get at the brewery. We package it all into these bottles, uh, cork and caged. And what we are drinking now is our 2020 Grand Cru. Thank you, sir. Gotcha. Um, so the base of this beer is the beer that we brewed for our 15th anniversary. So that goes back to 2012. Um, it was just a traditional Belgian dark strong ale, probably one of my favorite beers I think we've ever brewed here. Um, we brought it back in for our 20th anniversary, which we barrel aged, I think all in bourbon barrels. Um, and then for this release, we took some of that, we put it into port wine barrels, tequila barrels, and bourbon barrels. Uh, roughly about a third each, percentage wise, and then blended that all back together. Um, Moving through each barrel? Uh, in terms of blending them? Yeah. We basically just pulled them all in and, and put them in our bright tank, okay. um, yielding only probably like 20 hectoliters worth or so. And uh, it's barrel just, age, I'm less familiar with. I gotta, yeah, let me. Barrel that. age stuff is it's awesome. So basically, what we do, you know, it's the term Vinnie Zalerzo uh, coined, is pulling nails. So when you, before you fill the barrel, you kind of drill a little hole, pop a nail in the bottom on the side. Uh, once it's been aging over in the warehouse uh, where our, our barrels condition, we'll go over there every once in a while, pull those nails, you get the little stream coming out, get your sample, taste it. Um, so for these barrel. Uh, blendery series we like to pull the nails get a bunch of different pitchers worth and then try different blends of those beers until we get something that we really like um, so these are really special releases for us um, i don't know they're, they're kind of one-offs that we may never ever be able to replicate yeah um, and again you can only get it here at the brewery so uh, if you're lucky enough to, to get, make it here and and see it on the shelf might as well grab one. This is incredible. Yeah. I, and I think that the big thing that I'm seeing here is that this is, and, and you, you can only get this here. You can only get this at Oma Gang. Uh, the big thing I'm feeling is just like, you know, we talk, we, we talk about, there's all, there's so much different, different styles. There's so much different uh, of beers to craft beer to breweries. Every brewery has something very unique in their own way. Uh, I will go as far as saying, I mean, this is super, this is super unique in beer in general with this kind of beer and for Alma Gang. I mean, you, you gotta come here for this. This is awesome. This is, this isn't, I, I feel it's, again, that fanciness, I feel like, oh man, it's, it's like, like, you know. <laughs> going back to the wine thing, if you buy a vintage bottle of wine, I, this is something that you buy this, same thing, maybe you let it sit a little bit. Uh, absolutely. And then it I gets would, better and better with age. I'd buy a couple bottles, you know, and maybe have one or two uh, as soon as I got home, but then, yeah, leave them in the basement for a year or two years, three years, four years, yeah. five years. Uh, this beer is going to age spectacularly. Yeah, yeah. particularly with a high ABV beer, sometimes they'll drink maybe just a little hot, um, just just as as it's fresh, yeah. and that a, a little bit of time on there will mellow it out very gracefully. What a taste of Oma Gang! I mean, we got. Everything, real different flavors from each thing, a lot of flavor, a lot of incredible beer that you're gonna get here at Oma Gang. Thank you guys so much, this has been Thank awesome. You guys. Thank you guys, it's been Cheers. great. Cheers. Cheers. Good to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. If any bar or brewery is looking to put Oma Gang on one of your taps, here's how. I would just say our local our local sales representative. Um, so so we're, we're lucky that we have a pretty pretty large sales group that's out across the country. Um, so, so in most major metropolitan areas, there's there's a market manager and then a sales team underneath. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can certainly call the brewery and we'll put you in touch with the right person. But uh, yeah, uh, for, for us to just get a, get on draft on a rotator, um, chances are there's somebody your in your neighborhood who uh, uh, works for Oma Gang is a pretty good idea of, of what we carry. Uh, Pilsner. 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 Yeah, Pilsner. Nice light beer. Really refreshing. Nice job. Neon lights, baby. Neon lights. Great, great summer, uh, great summer We were here years ago when it was a little place, a little barn. It turned into all it is. It's great. Yeah, it's great. 
that ends our day here at Brewery Omega Gang. What an amazing day it has been. Thank you to Allison, Matt, and Justin for helping us out, and thank you to everyone here at Omega Gang. Yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Be sure again to subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter to see where our journey takes us next on What's on Tap. Cheers. All right, let's go grab another beer.